All right, everyone, so for today's uh, big idea is we're going to actually start to, to use WordPress. And from the show of hands that I saw a moment ago, not everyone has a WordPress website. Um, you might have a website, but it might not be set up in WordPress. And that's okay, because what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the free um, WordPress hosted website. I'll compare and contrast the two big styles of WordPress, which is WordPress hosted or self-hosted. I'll explain that in one moment. So let's go ahead and open up your web browser. Any one that you like, go to the web. Let's go to the address wordpress.org. .org. WordPress.org. You probably don't visit many .org websites. Does anyone know what .org stands for? Nonprofit. Organization, literally, but it doesn't need to be a nonprofit. It could be many other types of organizations. So .org <coughs> is for usually an organization. Now the .org or the .com and so forth has to some degree lost its meaning throughout the years, throughout the 25 years of the web. It used to be that if you were going to be a company, you were going to sell a product, you had to get the .com. .com is for commercial. My website was a commercial website, so I would get victorsbakery.com because I was selling products. And then maybe I had a collection of related websites. That might be a network, so that would be .net. So I would get victorsartists.net, and all of us connected in a network would be that. And then we've got org, which could be a nonprofit or for-profit organization. And so that was .org. But as I said, as the years have gone on, that is sort of blurred. That's not really set in stone like it used to be. You can claim any name with any extension. There's a bunch of new ones you might not have heard of. Has anyone heard of the .me? Victor.me, I can get that. That'll look, look great for my own personal blog or my own portfolio, perhaps. I believe they've actually also recently created whatever dot blog that one is out later on we'll look well what are the ones available because probably dot coms taken as I said the web has been around for 25 years perhaps the name that you want was taken 10 years ago so with these new extensions we might have a name we, you might be able to claim the name that wasn't available before So we'll look at WordPress.org. This is WordPress is web software you can use to create a beautiful website or blog. We like to say that WordPress is both free and priceless at the same time. So WordPress is software to create a website, either a website or blog. And I believe, remind me because I'm teaching like five classes at once, in this class did I talk about the kinds of WordPress sites that we can create? Uh, as in blog, website, and hybrid. Did I mention that in this class? No. Oh, okay, I'll mention it soon. But WordPress, <laughs> WordPress gives us the ability to, to create what more than one kind of website. And notice it says here, a website or blog. I'll talk about the differences are, of course, but for the moment, the point is that we're going to use WordPress. On this site here, we have news. It shows that CNN uses... Uh, WordPress, eBay uses WordPress, apparently also the singer Blondie uses WordPress. Um, it has 928,000 likes on Facebook and so forth. Um, this is also the place where I would download the software, don't download it. But this is also the place where I would look up the manual, the instructions up on the top under support. We have forums and documentation. Documentation is the instruction manual for WordPress. It tells you everything about everything about WordPress. Also known as the codex, the WordPress codex. The WordPress codex. It's an instruction manual for WordPress. Every, every possible uh, feature of WordPress is documented there. They've also got forums. So this is where people are asking questions and getting answers. 
So perhaps the question that you've got regarding your WordPress site has already been asked. So you can just search it, find the answer, and fix your problem. Or if your question is, your problem has not been asked, you can ask that question, and hopefully you'll get an answer. Um, sometimes you get the answer right from the WordPress workers, the employees, or sometimes you get an answer from someone very knowledgeable. So it says over 60 million people have chosen WordPress to power the place on the web they call home. We'd love you to join the family. And it says download. Now, we're not going to download the software because this requires us to install it. We need to install it on a web server. How many of you have a web server? Raise your hand. So not that many people again. The web server, you get it from a service provider, which I'll talk about later. But the software here, the WordPress software, is installed on the server. This is different from software like Microsoft Word or Adobe Dreamweaver. It's different from that kind of software which gets installed on a computer. On this computer, we've got a variety of software installed, and only on this computer can you access it. You know, if you go home, you can't use our, um, our CMAP tool software. You're not on our computer. So that might be obvious to you, but the difference is that WordPress installs to your server. And your server can be accessed by any computer because it's a web server. You access it with a web browser. So any computer with an internet connection you can use to connect to your WordPress site and edit it from any computer. So that's the big difference between the WordPress software. It's not going to be installed to your personal computer. It's installed to your server, which you basically have to rent. And I'll talk about it later. Yes. Now, there's also WordPress, let's go to WordPress.com. As I said a moment ago, .org is for an organization which may or may not be nonprofit, and .com is traditionally a commercial entity, which is some website where something is for sale, perhaps. Here we have WordPress.com. Create your new website for free. WordPress.com is the best place for your personal blog or business site. It says create a website, and it says mobile friend, mobile ready, and blah blah blah. You, it's easy to use. Get your own .com. It's SEO friendly. WordPress powers 23% of the internet. So this is the largest software that people use throughout the internet, throughout the web, to create a website. 23%, which is hundreds of millions of websites globally. Now, we are going to focus on WordPress.com because, again, it says here free. If you were going to use the software from WordPress.org, you would need that service provider. You would need an account over at GoDaddy or Bluehost or uh, HostGator or a variety of other providers. And their prices range. From very affordable, like a dollar a dollar ninety nine a month, to like two hundred dollars a year. There's a big range. So briefly, and then in more detail, next uh, or later, I'll mention these service providers. Like I said, one of them is GoDaddy.com. It's opening up a little bit slow. I think our network is always a, a little slow here. GoDaddy.com, they're pretty famous. They're famous enough to be in Super Bowl commercials, and we know that that's expensive. And so here they'll sell you your .com for $9.99 per year. You're actually going to rent your name on the internet. That's just the way it is. You can get a .co, so if your .com is taken, you might be able to get Victor.co. That's also $9.99. We've got also .us, $4.99, so maybe I can get Victor.us. One of the new ones is video. You can get Victor's movies dot video. Obviously, you might not have ever heard of that, and I'm going to say like 99% of the population has also not heard of these new names. But as time goes on, they will, because all the dot coms are getting taken, or maybe even already taken, especially the one that you want. 
So the, the, there's a bunch of new ones that are coming out. And notice this one is $19.99 a year. So one piece of the puzzle is that you need to buy the domain name. Your name on the internet. Notice at the top, domains. And the other piece is the is the hosting. The hosting is basically the hard drive, the space where WordPress is installed, where all your pictures are stored, where all your blog f text is stored, where your movies are stored. So the domain name is the is the name of your website, your address, and the hosting is the server, the hard drive where where the actual files are stored. So you're going to need both of those. And price-wise, just let me very quickly here search some prices. You can probably get it. Let's see. It's available. $9.99. So I can... Per year, yes. If you uh, select more than one year at a time, they often give you discounts. So 10%, 20%, 30%. Most likely that's the service provider, whichever one you have, GoDaddy or Bluehost or HostMonster or Yahoo or whatever. Most likely they are the ones sending you that notification once a year. If you wanted to switch yeah. from GoDaddy to another you can. You are able to port your name from company to company. And it's supposed to be relatively easy. Just like, remember, a few years ago, we were able to, uh, well, we weren't able to, to port our phone number. Remember, we had a phone number on AT&T. We wanted to move to Verizon, and we couldn't. And then legislation came, up, came on to be able to let us do that, and now it's easier. Perhaps it's not the easiest thing, but it's doable. Same thing with service. With, with websites here. Now, I have had issues, for example, moving away from Yahoo to GoDaddy for a client. Um, I've moved a website for a client from uh, GoDaddy to Bluehost, and it was pretty easy. So I think it depends on which companies you're moving from or to. But you are able to change your name and your service from one company to another. Some might make it e harder than others because they want your business. But you won't really know how complicated it is until you start to do it. Yes. It's a. It was a hassle when I did it, but that was about five years ago. I don't know if it got better. Hopefully, it's better. And the other is the hosting. Yes, which was what I was going to say right here. So look at these prices. You can get economy hosting, and this is $4.99 a month. And what kind of features does it have? Well, it tells us here. I'll explain in a moment. And then we've got Deluxe, $5.99, and we've got Ultimate, $7.99. So let me just do a quick bit of math here. Calculator. It was $9.99 for the name. Oh, well, let me do it this way. Four, let's, let's say we're going to buy the cheapest one, $4.99 a month. So times 12 plus the $9.99 for the name. It's about $70. $70 for one year of service. If you buy, uh, notice it does say if you buy them with more time, then uh, you're saving here 33%. If you're buying it this, it's 46%. I recently bought for a client their own setup for them, and they uh, they saved some amount. They, they, they paid, I believe, for five years of service. You can buy it at five years at a time, and they'll sell it to you even more of a discount. Okay, so the seven ninety nine gives you the domain name. No, the nine ninety nine gives you the domain name, and these are the hosting. These are the hosting um, features because you want remember a domain name and hosting. And you cannot do this on WordPress.com. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So let me get to that in just one moment. Uh, so this is this this particular company and this particular prices. Question. So, looks like the deluxe and the ultimate 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 and the ultimate
Yes. So if you notice, this one says only one website at a time. So I can only have Victor's Bakery. But if I buy this one, I have unlimited. So with the same price here, basically I can have Victor's Bakery, Victor's Art, Victor's dogwalking.com. I can have all of those stored on my same hosting. However, I still have to pay for the name separately. Yeah, so as long as I pay for the, those three different names, I can save them, I can store them all on my one hosting. If I buy this one, I have to buy a separate hosting for each of those three. So it is a better deal to get, in this case with GoDaddy, Deluxe. If you're going to have more than one website. If you're just going to have your one main website, that's fine there. $4.99 a month for one year. Notice what it's also got, uh, the space. The economy one has a, only 100 gigabytes. That's still a lot of storage. Your blog, if you're just writing blog, if you're writing text and adding some pictures, you're never going to fill that up. If, however, you're adding text and pictures and video and sound, that might go toward filling up your, your, your hard drive, your hosting space. For $1 more, then, you've got unlimited storage. They've all got unlimited bandwidth, which is the transfer, the ability to transfer, or the, the ability for other people to connect to your site to view your site. They're all unlimited now. You can create 100 emails, 500 emails, or 1,000 emails. So you can have contact at victorsbakery.com, sales at victorsbakery.com, questions at victorsbakery.com. Even the basic one gives you 100 of those. And they're having a deal now that if you buy the $4.99 for one year, you're going to get the domain for free the first year. So you're going to save $9.99 there. $7.99 is all of those plus two times the power and memory so that it'll make your site faster. It'll allocate more resources to it. Something about premium DNS, what's that? A $35 value makes it easy to resolve common issues that prevent people from accessing your site. So I'd have to read about that. And then you have a one-year SSL certificate, and that is good if you've got a website where you're going to sell products. Because the SSL certificate is basically that little lock that appears on your address. The HTTPS, which is security, that's not free. That is going to cost from a variety of prices $70 to $90 a year in most companies. That is that they will then verify and vouch and give you security that your site is going to protect your customer's credit card information. Those are not, that is not included. SSL is not included with these two. You'd have to buy it separately for about $99. But if you go with the $7.99 a month, you'll get the first year for free if you're going to sell products. It's very useful. Question. A website and a blog? Mm, well, I would need a little bit more information. Like, are you saying you're going to have, for example, victorsbakery.com and victorsblog.com? Is that separate, what you mean? Yes. Then it would be better to get the deluxe because then you will be able to have both of those websites. If I had victorsbakery.com and also have victorsbakery.com slash blog, that exists on my one website. It's part of the same address, and I could stick with the economy. That'll just be victorsbakery.com slash blog. I won't have to have victorsbakery.com and victorsblogbakery.com. That's two separate sites. So if you got 599 and then you got you get the first your domain name would be free, but that would be only for the first year. So for after the first, the first year. year, then you have to pay an extra ten dollars a month. Yeah. The, okay. Exactly. Oftentimes these promotions are for the first year, and then they go back to regular prices. So that's why it tells you here regular price is going to be whatever. And you always can make a deal. I've dealt with GoDaddy for since the year 2001. I've dealt with Bluehost, another one that I'll mention in a moment, for also like seven years. I've dealt with a variety of these companies for a long time. And I know that if you just leave your credit card as auto payment, they'll auto charge you the regular price. But if you call them, you get in contact with them a week or two before you're going to expire and talk to a real person, they will give you a deal. So that, that's what I do all the time. My contract is going to expire. I give them a call. And then I say, do you have any deals going on? They say, oh, yes, we have one here. And then they activate it, and I'm saving money again. Does WordPress cut you a deal? 
Uh, not really. When I get back to WordPress, we'll see its pros and cons, and I think it's mostly cons, but I don't want to get ahead of myself just yet. Let me look at another one. Bluehost.com. I've dealt with them for a long time also, so this is $3.95 a month. Well, what do they have exactly? I'd have to go in in the details and read what does that provide for me. And notice all of these have a sort of a live chat or a phone number to get in contact with them. I've talked with them. I've dealt with them. Uh, they are there basically to help you get you the best deal if you reach out to them. So I've used GoDaddy for my personal website and for other clients' websites since about 2001. I've never really had a problem with my site. I did have a problem early on in the beginning when I was starting off in this business. Um, I forgot to pay my bill that month and then they shut down my site. But then I just paid for it and it came back. So really I haven't had any problems with GoDaddy. Uh, conversely, I've had a long time client since about 2001 and she's had GoDaddy since about 1998. And about seven years ago, five years ago, she was having more and more problems with them. She just felt the service wasn't as good as it could be. And then she had me move it over to Bluehost. And she's been fine with Bluehost since that time. So results vary. Um, both of these that I've dealt with have worked well. I've also got one more to mention, hostmonster.com. They're all going to be vying for your business, so they're going to be giving you different prices, different deals, services very, very, very similar. They all have the ability for you to install WordPress. And this is what I meant by previously over here on WordPress.org. We are not going to go here and download WordPress and install it. That's actually pretty technical. What you're going to do is, eventually, you're going to get service from one of these providers or anyone you choose that I haven't mentioned you're gonna buy the service and then there's gonna be in the control panel somewhere a button that says install WordPress and it'll do it you don't have to really download the software and upload it and install it and configure it and so forth there's gonna be a one-click install on these on these companies GoDaddy has it and HostMonster and Bluehost all of them have a one-click install sort of thing where you can install WordPress and a bunch of other software. And the WordPress software is the free software, but you are going to be paying for the service provider. Unless you go to WordPress.com, which I'll talk about in a moment. But any questions before we, we get to that? Yes. In theory, they all have access to the same global pool of names. Okay. So if you're looking for it on GoDaddy or Bluehost, they should both tell you if it's available or not. They they both should have it or they both should not have it. Yeah, you know, they all they all they all check the same registry to see if it's available. Now I do have to mention, and I don't know how widespread this is, but I know it's happened to me, and it's happened to a couple of students that sometimes bring it up to me. I've found that I sometimes do research for a domain name at at a company. And if I don't buy it at the time that I'm researching it, and I try to buy it a day or two or a week later, suddenly it's gone. So I know that's happened to one of my clients. We were working on their contract. We were talking to them what we were going to do for them. We actually did a little research. Their name, their brand name was available. When they signed the contract at the end of the week and we all sat down to buy the name, it was taken. So I don't want to be cynical, but it has happened to me, and students have come up to me to tell me that it happened to them. So I would say before you start to do the research, have some names in mind, and then as you search here and you find the name, buy it. Because I don't know if there's some sort of uh, 
monopoly or collusion or something going on behind the scenes because I know it has happened to my particular company. What's that? There seem to be some companies out there that, that grab up the names and then try to sell them. And yeah, and that's that's called... Uh, they find it on their websites and they say, oh, are you so-and-so? Do you want to buy this? this? <laughs> that's, uh, that's called cyber squatting. Uh, you might have heard of squatting in the real world where vagrants move into an abandoned house and then they claim squatters rights that they live there and then there's that issue. Well, these companies, anyone can buy any name. If I was lucky enough 20 years ago to buy, or 25 years ago to buy Apple.com before Apple, I could then have then told Apple, hey, you want this name? I've got it. And maybe made some money off of it. And that still happens nowadays. I don't think there's like a really a, an actual legal case for it, even though the web is 20 years old. Uh, because sometimes like foreign companies or like uh, shady companies throughout the world buy this stuff and good luck taking them to any court. So um, what I'm saying is when you do research for your name, make sure you can buy it at that moment. I would recommend it. You don't want to lose that name. You might have to settle for the Victor's Bakery or maybe the original Victor's Bakery. Question. I started a blog about 10 years ago in Microsoft Spaces. Mm -hmm. And it migrated over to WordPress. I just found it again right now. Oh. And I'm just curious. Uh, I imagine WordPress is probably in the business of hosting also, right? In in a sense, yes. And we'll get back to that in a moment when we look at WordPress.com. Well, I'm just curious that, you know, since I already have something started here, if I wanted to keep it going and, and just kind of change it to fit what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. Would that be <coughs> possibly or would it be better to start fresh? Well, the pro and con of having a website that old is that you already have that name, your site's been established, you might already have a, a head start from your competition for just simply existing that long. Because one of the aspects of SEO is the length of time that your website exists. If I created my website a year before my competitor, I have a little bit of edge over him. Now, you've had yours for, as you said, a long time. It, it, it's been inactive, though, and when I did a search, it, it didn't show up on the first three, four, five pages. Well, there's so, other factors also because it has not been updated. That's right. another factor of so SEO. If I start updating it, then it that, might, that age factor might, might kick in. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Now, the, the possibility is the opposite, that that name might have had a bad reputation in that sometimes, for example, uh, if I had a website... Uh, several years ago that was, you know, affordablemedicines.com. That would have been the perfect name to get five or six or seven years ago. But nowadays, that's sort of seen as a low-quality website because it's got artificial, kind of an artificial name in the address. Mm -hmm. So we can look in the lab time at your special case to really decide what would be the best for you. Uh, so I can't quite say for everyone. It's better to talk on an individual level. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, do you have any suggestions for good um, homes for a uh, WordPress multi-site? Honestly, I and my company have not really worked with multi-sites, so I can't really give you the best answer for that. I, I would um, I would look it up that way exactly. I would do a search and say best service provider for a WordPress multi-site and then read and then read what the people are saying because they will be able to give you the best answer based on their experiences now what a multi-site is is a special kind of WordPress site that connects a variety of sites together and it's a little bit more advanced it's like a network of of um, WordPress sites connected together it's a bit advanced um, so I would look it up because I don't quite have the answer to, to give. All right, so let's get back to WordPress.com. The segue was we went over to GoDaddy, Bluehost, etc. These are known as self hosted solutions. You buy the service here, you manage it yourself. You buy it for yearly or for five years, ten years, whatever, and then you're responsible for its up, upkeep and maintenance and updates and and all of that. It's self-hosted. You yourself are, are managing it. In contrast, WordPress.com can also host your website. 
and they can also sell you the domain name. But honestly, I think they're not worth it. I think their prices are a little too high for what they offer. We'll look at what those prices are in just a, a little bit. But what we're going to do in this class is we're going to create the completely free WordPress.com blog here. And I'm going to show you as much as I can in our time how to use it and of course how to blog with it. And then you can decide to stay with it or not. And if you don't, well, you, you just lost time instead of money. And then if you decide actually you started your WordPress.com site here and you liked it, you can transfer it over to a real one on Bluehost. So you can, you can do that as well. You're not going to lose anything. So that's why in my perfect world, when everyone comes in this class, everyone has already Bluehost set up, or GoDaddy, or HostMonster, whatever. In my perfect world, everyone's already got their service provider set up and their WordPress site ready to go, and then we just learn how to use WordPress. But what we need to do uh, is we've got to set up a WordPress account so that I can teach you what I want to teach you. And I'm not going to ask you to pay $60, $70, $80 just to learn this in a four-week class. So we're going to create an account together right now at WordPress.com. Any questions so far? All right, so we're going to see how to create our WordPress site. I'll walk you through it. We'll see how much it costs because it's free, but then you'll see why you might want to pay. <laughs> let's go back to WordPress.com and let's click on Create Website at the top. The first thing you'll notice is you're going to be able to get a name, but it's going to have to have WordPress.com at the end. So if I want Victor.com, mm, I need to get victorsbakery.wordpress.com. On another screen, they'll tell me, maybe you can buy Victor.com. Maybe you can buy Victor.com. Right here we will get the free Victor.wordpress.com. And that's enough for us in this class to learn what I want to teach you. Uh, so let's go ahead and type in the name of your website here. You can make this up. You can do it for real. I would sort of recommend to make this as a test site, as a learning site. Let's say I, I want to, I don't have it yet. Let's say I want victorsbakery.com. You could set up here victorsbakery.wordpress.com or I can set it up just as you know test victorswordpress.com, whatever you want. I'm just saying you can choose whatever your name here. Yeah, it gets recorded on the WordPress.com server, and then Google can find it. Yahoo can find it, so it'll be a real kind of website. This is going to be real. That's why I'm saying you could just use it for testing. You could make a fake one, and I kind of recommend it. Yeah, I'm saying. <coughs> so, was that your question there in the corner? So, I'm going to do Victor's Great Site dot WordPress dot com. So, this will be a real site. It will be findable by the search engines. It will be live. You can remove it, but I would say, well, let's just to for what I want to teach you. Maybe just make something up. So I'm going to click Create Your Site and Continue. <clears throat> so my address is going to be victorsgreatsite.wordpress.com. If yours is taken, well, you'll have to choose another name. It's going to ask for your email. This is not for you to create a brand new email. This is asking you, what's your, what's your email so that we can send a confirmation message to you that you are a real person wanting to set this up. So put in an address here, a real address that you can access.
It'll ask for a username, which might uh, it might take it from your uh, email. But what I would suggest for the username, make it the same as the website address you wrote earlier. This username right here, you want to make you want to write this username the same as the address you wrote up there. and then make a password, and all of these things can be changed later. So if you want the full features of WordPress.com, such as being able to publish your post, you're going to need to confirm your email. So like me, I made one up there. But if you, if you want to, to publish these posts, you need to confirm the email, that's why it's asking for an email, so not just any spammer sets this up, real people set this up. So I'm going to click next step. It's telling me my password is too weak, but is it not going to let me go? If it asks you about a weak password, then uh, I would try to make a better one because they they're concerned about the security of the of the network. So I would try to make a slightly more complex one. At the top, this is, says I'm on step two of five. Question. Why, why would that mean the code be more expensive than the others? They are uh, more unique, I guess, or they're available. Not exactly sure why they would be. So step two of five, this is what I've got. I'm just checking this. I'll click next. And then this is where it comes to step three, find a custom address. Again, right now we're going to get something.wordpress.com. And that's fine for us as a learning tool. But here they say, well, you could get victorsgreatsite.com for only $18 a year, or victorsgreatsite for .me, victorsgreatsite.co.org. I'm going to ignore all of that. And like I said, you know, that's $18. I bet I could get that same price over at GoDaddy for $9.99, or free if I buy it for a, the, the hosting for a year. I'm going to say at the bottom here, no thanks. Quick question. How do you change your username? Because you said it should reflect the name of the site. Uh, you could try pressing on the back browser, or did you already go through the whole process? I'll show you where to change it a little bit later once I've logged in. I'm on step four of five, and this is choose a theme. WordPress is very cool because we can change the look and feel, the design of your site very easily with the click of a button. This is known as switching a theme. Uh, when I get to this screen, it, it recommends a variety of themes, um, and themes do range from free to premium, which would be about $25 one-time fee, $50, $75, $100. People make a living designing WordPress themes and selling them. So when I get to this screen, these are all examples of themes that I could use. And I don't see any, but you might see one perhaps that says premium. I don't know if you see any, but I'm going to choose any one of these themes. You might not see the same ones that I see, but if you see, um, let's see, if you see, uh, if you see Big Brother, choose that one. That's what I'm going to choose. If you find something else, that's fine. And I'll show you how to change themes later. So I'm going to click Big Brother. And 
next step. If you want the full features of WordPress, it should be a real one because it's not going to let you publish your post until you verify your email. Okay. So what if it's just big practice and like My uh, mine got weird and it didn't let me proceed. What does stage five say? Okay. Um, so step five should be saying uh, they're gonna again try to sell you a service, perhaps because they are .com, uh, remember, there's different services, different levels of service. We're going to use the free one, which gives us most of the features. But let's say we wanted more features, so that there's, a, there's one that's being sold at some price, and then there's another one being sold for e-commerce. If I want to sell products, I believe it's $299. Is that what it says? So $299 to set up your website to sell products. Again, very expensive. Again, very expensive, so I don't think really the WordPress.com is that useful for their prices that they're offering. You're better off getting GoDaddy or Bluehost, HostMonster, etc. And, and uh, those prices are going to be better, and they're going to give you more features. Question? Yes, question. Um, but you take the free, it's just, you can just blog, it's not a website. It's it's also a website, and I'll talk about the difference once we fully set it up. Okay, so now I'm in. I don't exactly know how I got in because they're rejecting me when I found it. When you're in, what do you see? Do you see some screen that looks like this? Uh, no, I'm past that. I mean, uh, the, uh, the I went dashboard. out to my site and got in through my site. Oh, dashboard. It said view when you can't. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, there's, I, I got the hello world. Hmm. But it didn't like my link and password. I think that was because I was opening in another browser and I was just completing the activation. Hmm. So, so I went out to like go through my email, and then it took me to uh, sign in. Well, what we're going to do in just a moment, if it's not quite working, we're going to take our break so I can help people. But if I'm, I might let me go forward. So if yours is not letting you, uh, that's OK. We're going to continue. I'm going to continue just for the moment, and then we'll take a break, and we'll try to help people if you're not quite there. Uh, so uh, yes? So um, the email address that I want to use, I've used on another blog, and I don't think it likes it. OK, so if you have another email address, that would be better. But I can't use this one. No, because if you use that on another WordPress site, it won't let you. OK, so I did bring it. I did manage to bring it up here. There's the free one, free for life. You'll be able to use most of the features of WordPress. You'll be able to use most of the, pre, most of the features for, of WordPress for free. And then um, we've also got the $99 one, which gives us more features. What are they? They're listed somewhere. And then $299 a year for e-commerce and other advanced stuff. Again, this is not necessary. So if you manage to get to this screen, click Select Free. If not, again, in a moment, we'll take a break so I can help you individually. But um, I'm going to... If you manage to get to some screen that kind of looked like mine, thanks for signing up with WordPress. I'm going to click My Site at the top here. And if you then see the name of your site right here, we're in the right spot. If not, it's, I'm going to take a break uh, for 10 minutes, and I'll, and I'll help you individually. We, we all want to try to create this, and then we can go on. So we'll be back at 7.03.
If you need any help to get to this point, like like me, call me over and we'll get you set up.